What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Traffic Channel coming to you with another edition. But when these leans, likes, and locks, MLB, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. I'm out here in Scottsdale, Arizona, finishing out uh, the lovely Easter holiday. Hopefully you all, uh, anybody who celebrates, uh, had a fantastic Easter holiday themselves. I'll be back at the home base tomorrow, but uh, obviously it was a great weekend. Hopefully you had the same. Uh, it was pretty light in terms of MLB on the weekend. Um, just kind of strange. So I kind of did a little bit of catching up here this afternoon. Uh, really excited about the slate that we have here on Monday. Basically, almost everybody in action here for it in the MLB streets. NBA, there's six games. So check out NBA Lindy's here, here as well. But I'm working on the holiday for you because, again, I love you guys. And also, it's very early in these MLB seasons. We are going through the rotation for the first time. Obviously, that's Kind of a saving grace i think you definitely want to manage expectations early in the season and you want to be early uh you want to have your convictions you want to pick apart certain pieces that i think are a little bit more predictable than others again it's all about probability and price and that's what it comes down to at the end of the day so let's find ourselves some bets shall we producer jacob's on hand friends we got bet mgm you can get up to fifteen hundred dollars in bonus bets signing with them down below it's only if you're 21 and over and if you have a gambling problem please call 1-800 gambler y'all i'm back you're back we're all back. Another week of MLB and NBA Lindy's coming down the pipeline. Producer Jacob, uh, what do I always say? Oh, yeah. Let's get to the picks. We've got a lot of unknown quantities that exist on Monday slate. A lot of new pitchers. A lot of guys called up for the first time from AAA. A couple of guys international. But this is one pretty known. Charlie Morton taking on Chris Flexen. And yeah, I got my flexing in my candy pain, rolling dang sip and drink on an 84 swang. That's good stuff. And if it's your first time tuning in on Lindy's, you probably have no idea why I just said that other than Mike Jones is awesome. But the Atlanta Braves friends, we got Charlie Morton here on the mound and the strikeout rate, it's been in flux here at times. No, 25.6% uh, K rate last season. Uh, it's come down from the 28-ish percent that it was around in 2021, 2022. But a 4.64 expected ERA just freaks me out a little bit. It's my happening baby, and it freaks me out. But anyway, uh, it's still not something that I'm going to go bet against with this uh, White Sox team. It's a very small sample size, very, very small sample size that we have so far on some of these teams. But there is no doubt, no doubt Chicago White Sox are going to be one of the worst offenses in baseball. 72 played attempts over the weekend here. 62 WRC plus thus far. Again, those are not good numbers. 100 WRC plus, that's like... League average, that's the neutral spot. We'll get to some guys that are like the Atlanta Braves that are leading the league currently in WRC Plus uh, offensively. 180 over the course of oh, 180. I love the darts call. The, the darts call is nice. But I really don't have a play from this one. I was looking for props, looked at some other things. This is going on early in the morning. But I think you pass. Even though Atlanta minus one and a half, it's kind of like betting the Dodgers on the run line every day. I mean, Atlanta on the run line, this is something that you could definitely get down with and, and do it. You know, get down with your bad self. Enjoy. But uh, minus 130 on a run line here feels a little bit thin. Chris Flexen, he's terrible. He's no good. He's very, very bad. He's taking on an absurd offense. He had a 509 expected slugging last season, 9.4% barrel percentage. But it's priced in appropriately. Going to be tough to jump on the run lines in some of these spots unless they're playing good teams and feel good about the value you're getting with the Braves. Next up, also uh, afternoon-ish game here. Colorado taking on the Cubbies. Hey, we're heading to the south side of Chicago. Or well, it's actually east because it's like on the lake and there's like a little tiny golf course that's on the edge that I really wanted to play last time I was in Chicago, but we were going to the Cubs game. It was fantasticness, but wind. That is the number one thing you always need to pay attention to here with the Chicago Cubs, and that's why we have these totals. Now, I did see a look-ahead total at a different spot that I ended up evaluating in my sheet. It was six and a half for seven, which again, is a, nah, that, that hook on six and a half for seven is a big deal relative to like an 11 half to 12. That's not going to be as big of a deal relative to like outcomes of games, range of outcomes of games, but Anywho, we're looking at some weather that's not all that terrible here. Again, 65, I think is what it said over in Chicago. I'm having to double check myself because, again, I've looked at 14 MLB games. My brain is just getting back to processing it all. Luckily, we have data. We're a data company here. This is the thing that's most important to us. So uh, six and a half is the opening line at ESPN bet. There you go. I knew I wasn't a liar. There you are, because it dropped like right, right before we started recording this one. It had updated automatically. But uh, Dakota Hudson is on one side of things. And I do have a play from this one, even though, again, waiting on run line, 
total just gave you that one so six and a half slash seven uh that's going to be the opening number everywhere it would appear but six and a half at espn bet with major juice on the over i'm not going to be touching that whatsoever but dakota hudson formerly of the st louis cardinals uh he's not very good in any way shape or form i cannot believe what i'm about to do here in this spot but it has more to do with the pitcher on the other side and we'll talk about it dakota hudson 45.4 percent hard hit percentage 369 x woba 292 expected batting average and just <laughs> 12.7% K rate, but we're talking about a low, low total. We're talking about a game where a play here, a play there, and this happens all the time in baseball. Again, it's a thin margins type betting deal. We have a very long season. We don't want to get out of control here. And I do tend to bet more dogs when it comes to money line because you see some of these get inflated. Holds not crazy. It is what it is. Again, we have tools that do that for you over on Odd Chopper, but one thing they did identify a lot of plus 165s around the universe here in Colorado. There's one hanging plus 180, and that is the one that I'm going to be dabbling with here on the Colorado money line. And here is why. Showed it in Managa. He is brand new here, a lefty, signed like a $52 million deal, coming over from Japan, left on left. But I'm not really all that impressed with anything that he does. He's already a 30 year old. I mean, I'm not saying that there isn't the ability to come over season and start earlier here, but. Overall, his pitch mix just isn't something that I'm all that impressed by. And uh, I was going through a couple of his box scores from, from spring training, looking at velocity reports. And overall, I don't think we're getting anything crazy from this guy. I don't think he's going to have a ton of strikeout upside. I don't think he is somebody that uh, once teams figure him out and place teams that are better than the Rockies, I think he's going to get hit up a lot here. Uh, there's a reason he's your fourth or fifth starter here, depending on how you look at it for the Cubs. And I like the Colorado money line. I know that they just got uh, lit up there in a couple of these Arizona spots, but Arizona's a good baseball team. Arizona's a very, very good baseball team. They also got the benefit of going completely nuclear on that opening matchup for them. So we're able to kind of dig into that Colorado bullpen, take it, took advantage, uh, I believe one three of the four. So there you are, friends. I like the Colorado money line because, again, it's a value-driven deal. Plus 180 here, better than the plus 165s. That's called a market-based approach. You want to utilize it? Check out Odd Chopper here. $14.95 for the weekly package, $49.95 monthly. OS Premium Tools, that is everything that we offer in every single sport, not just the MLB, but NBA, uh, NFL, and that's back around here, but college basketball for the Final Four. You want to be looking at a couple of those plays, you want to be firing them up in the Positive EV tool. And don't worry, friends, if you're in a spot where you have prize picks, underdog, those are your only spots for prop exposure, we have a fantasy optimizer to help you take advantage of that as well. So $14.95 weekly. Not a bad deal. You also get the Discord to be able to get my premium betting card every single well, Monday through Friday, every single time that I am betting anything whatsoever. You shall know about it in that premium Discord, friends. And on the weekends of Easter, you know, you take a little time off and you kick it with the fam, but then you get back to work, that's for sure. But oh, you could do that for 20% off using promo code Lindy. Check it out, friends. L I N D Y, 20% off. Get your first week, $12. First month, $42. Back to the picks we go. Kind of a gross one in this spot. Uh, two pitchers that, again, more of the known quantity variety, not uh, like Imanaga, where, again, we are really flying blindly in a couple of these spots. Marco Gonzalez, soft, Boston little lefty, just can't believe that he is still out here existing in the world. And, I mean, what are we doing here? 19.8% whiff percentage last season, just a 15.8% K rate. Does limit barrels, does limit hard hit. Good for him there. But Mackenzie Gore on the other side, He's kind of the inverse, where he gives up a lot of the hard hit, and then 472 expect slugging, 9.8% walk rate, terrible, but a 25.9% K rate. He is going to get swings and misses. And Pittsburgh, again, very, very small sample size that we have so far here. You're going to get neutralized, Jack Stowinski. You're going to get neutralized. Uh, you're not going to neutralize O'Neill Cruz. Rowdy Telez, you're for sure going to neutralize in some of these spots. So, like, the left-on-left -left thing, he is going to be all right in some of those spots. Mackenzie Gore is... But I kind of feel as though this is just a bet the under or pass here. This feels like a little bit of inflated number here. Washington, not the best of ballparks, neutral weather, not really feeling all that confident about anything really in this one. Maybe something prop wise shows up on the positive EV tool over at Odd Chopper, but otherwise, going to be an absolute pass of a baseball game under nine. As much as I want to target Marco Gonzalez, the price isn't exactly right. I want more. I want more. And Mackenzie Gore, that, that rhymed. That was cool. Here's something that I like, and 
it's tough to really figure out where you... Let me explain something here. Kansas City taking on Baltimore here. And Baltimore, they have been really fun to watch here in the early going. They're just going to be an awesome baseball team to cover all season long. From a lineup perspective, they have all of the pieces of a World Series contender. And now, adding Corbin Burns into the middle of that starting rotation, based on what we saw, the 11K outing opening day... Baltimore's got to feel pretty good about what they're bringing to the table. They go two of three over the weekend, two and one record taking on Kansas City here in this spot. Kansas City obliterated my twins on Sunday. Happy Easter to you and yours as well. But uh, in this specific spot, I haven't bet this one yet, but I'm going to call it a like for the people who understand where I'm getting at with this because we have a run line over there, minus 166, plus 130. There's one that snuck in here. At minus 150, and I feel like I just had to upgrade that to the lean like section. It was over on FanDuel there for a hot, hot second. It disappeared. Maybe it comes back. I would have loved to be able to, to capitalize on that. So if you're listening to this, minus 150 on the run rally, getting a run and a half here specifically. Here's the thing. You have two pitchers in Michael Walker and Dean Kramer that I'm not big fans of. Not big fans of at all. Already talked about and gushed about the Baltimore lineup, but... The weather, yet again, it feels though it's going to be a pretty neutral spot. And Kansas City has pieces. Mikel Garcia, uh, sweet moving girls. Haven't been able to do that all year, and that's sad. And of course, Bobby Witt, who I think is just going to smash this year, considering, well, he smashed last year too, so I'm not really taking a leap of faith here. But Kansas City plus one and a half. This has more to do with math than my analysis, if we're going to be honest. And just looking at the market-based approach across the board here, getting one kind of an outlier, sitting at minus 150 as opposed to the minus 166 that the prevailing number is, that's a big deal. That's a parlay piece for a lot of people who want to put the two or three piece parlays together. Won't be me. I'll just fire it straight up here if I can get that number again. The Angels sucked over the weekend. They're taking on Miami. And I, <laughs> I mean, you're Mike Trout. How do you feel about life right now? I mean, they did win a game somehow, one and two. So it didn't turn out that poorly. I mean, they're one and two. Phillies one and two. The Cubs are one and two. A lot of one and two teams. And they're taking on an 0 4 Miami Marlins team. Again, this is why you don't want to overreact to small sample sizes. Because overall, Miami, we've seen them turn over a lot of young arms into very, very proficient starters in Major League Baseball. And then other teams usually come and grab them, but that's beside the point. Anywho, Max Meyer are going to be taking the mound here, taking on Chase Silseth. And Silseth is probably, I think, the most intriguing arm from the Angels, period, which is wild because start Patrick Sandoval, he does not intrigue me in the slightest. But Silseth has strikeout stuff from last year. 25.3% K rate, 11.8% walk rate, had the 4.27 expected ERA, but... If he can limit the walks, where he was at an 11.8% walk rate last season, a 370x Wobacon, going along with like the ability to avoid, well, he's got to avoid some barrels here. It was a very limited sample size, if we're going to be honest. Again, less than 1,000 pitches that he had at the major league level. And working through some of the, the game logs specifically, more of like a long reliever type at periods to start off the season. And then once they were gone, they extended him further and further there. And we saw the whip get worse and worse and worse as time went on. So... Uh, I will say, there's still some apprehension I have to go completely nuts here. I do think the over would be an intriguing spot here because of Miami. You know, once we get to the summer months, they'll never have that roof open. But the roof can be open here in some of these spots. I'm going to be waiting and seeing. And Max Meyer, 23.1% K rate last season, but just in three starts, I believe that it was. Uh, no, it was overall two appearances total. So uh, not the best sample size yet again, working through some of his AAA stuff. I think this is just another wait and see approach on a pitcher that well, nobody has any familiarity with. Over eight and a half, it's like a prove it spot here. But the Angels lineup, do you feel good about it? I don't feel good about it. Do you feel good about the Miami Marlins lineup based on what we saw over the weekend? I don't feel good about it. Do you feel good about it? Let's not bet it then. There's 14 of these damn things on Monday. Next game. I kind of think this is a sneaky, fun baseball game. I think this is actually a spot where I kind of want to back both starting pitchers now. You bet in team out, right? We're talking money line, and it's not really possible. And I do think the Phillies, we're talking about a team that has a decent enough bullpen. I mean, we saw them make their run in October last season. No surprise. Brandon to Arizona. Arizona's pretty good. There's that. But anywho, we've got ourselves a really fun pitching matchup. On one side of it, Cincinnati Reds, starting Andrew Abbott, who has crazy good strikeout stuff. But similar to a lot of the Cincinnati arms, whether it's Hunter Green or whomever else that have 
crazy good strikeout stuff in that uh, rotation. They have crazy hard hit potential. 42.5% hard hit, 21.6 degree average launch angle last season. Now that is up there with Christian Javier in my graph. And if you're up there with Christian Javier in terms of the hard contact fly ball contact, that can spell disaster from time to time. I don't think it's going to be here, and here's why. The left-handed ability, just the ability that he has to, against lefties, be able to neutralize them a little bit, setting up the four-seamer, getting ahead in counts, and then going curveball and then sweeper, specifically the sweeper that he can actually throw to lefties. He can't get away with throwing a curveball uh, to, some of these, to some of these lefties still. It's kind of wild, but I think he's going to be able to get by the likes of Kyle Schwarber, Bryce Harper, and that, friends, is very useful in a spot where I'm interested in the under of eight and a half, mainly because I do like Christopher Sanchez a lot. 24.2% K rate also limits walks. So 4%, kind of a George Kirby-ish type number. George Kirby, even sillier, lower there, even though I kind of like Sanchez's stuff more than I like George Kirby's, which might be a hot take. 3.74 expected ERA last season. First time that he had really been lengthened out too. Nice to see the walk rate improve every year over year. 11.9% to 9.6% to 4% last season with the largest sample size, a uh, sample size that was almost double that of 2021 and 2022. So I think this under is something that not just projects out well for me, but you've got a pricing malfunction as well. We've got a uh, nine that's sitting on DK, minus 127, but we can get even money on this at eight and a half. Now, 27 cents. Not something you want to be betting this on TK. Uh, again, it's not worth that half run at that kind of a number. But eight and a half here at even money, half unit, I'm pretty happy with it. You should be too. Friends, BetMGM, they are the sponsor of the program. You can sign up down below. If you've not signed up for BetMGM yet, they have an awesome deal going. And it doesn't matter if it's 20, 50, 100, up to $1,500, whatever is in your bankroll, whatever is comfortable to your financial situation, friends, you have an ability to get that money back on your first bet that you take over at BetMGM in bonus bets. Yeah, you heard me. So if you bet something at massive long odds and it doesn't hit, guess what? You're getting it back in bonus bets. If you bet something with short odds, which I do not recommend for this, by the way, you're getting it back in bonus bets. However you want to be utilizing this, utilize it because it is money that a sportsbook is giving you to try out their product. They have a lot of the best K rates, yeah, or sorry, not K rates, a lot of the best K props to take advantage of in the marketplace. They generally tend to hang a lot of run lines that maybe are a little bit slower moving than other places. BetMGM is an awesome sportsbook to utilize here for our purposes. Odd Chopper, it's in intertwined with all the tools for a reason. So if you have your DraftKings, if you have your FanDuel and you're looking to add a third sports book or hopefully your eighth, ninth, tenth, because again, market-based approach, you want exposure to as many as possible, sign up for BetMGM down below, friends, only if you're 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. Dun, 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 dunning. Uh, I like that producer Jacob knew the bit that was coming before the bit happened because that's just how we are now, right? That, that that's how that's how we are like an old married couple we're not young made me think of wedding crashers that's the when they're on the stairs it's adorable we're, we're adorable we would have smashed the wedding crashing scene by the way probably not something be a long-term relationship you made the ring and the Okay, Dan Dunning, he's taking on Ryan Pepio, friends. And uh, Ryan Pepio is a guy that I'm kind of excited to see in this start. Uh, I won't be going completely berserk on anything other than this game, friends. Because I do think Ryan Pepio has good stuff. I'm not going to go out of my way to pick on him in a lot of different situations. 380 expected slugging, 23.9% K rate, 3% walk rate. All of that across the board is pretty darn good, but only 113 batted ball events again last season. We're talking about very limited samples in both of his seasons here at the bigs. Now, didn't show up because he was out for the beginning of last season. Shows up there on the 19th of August, working through some of these game logs. Looks like he has decent enough spot there, but once upon a time, he was with the uh, good old Los Angeles Dodgers and, well, gets picked up by another smart organization in the Tampa Bay Rays. So there's obviously something very much there. There's some hard hit that he just limits, 27.4%. The walk rate is obviously incredible. We just talked about Christopher Sanchez at 4%. 3.1% is walking like nobody. It's, again, George Kirby-ish in a lot of ways. But 
I want to direct your attention to Dane Dunning because I'm just confused how this guy is going to get out of Tampa Bay here without getting hit up in some capacity. He just seems like one of those pitchers that is just about to fall over the edge. Now, he's only 29 years of age. He did a phenomenal job last season of just like getting fastballs across the plate, 91, 92, getting ahead in counts, limiting the walks even further from 9.2% in 2020 down to 7.6% here. He's a workhorse guy, threw over 2,500 pitches for a second consecutive season. But that is three years in a row with an expected ERA. 4.76, 4.49, 4.48. There's really not been any improvement in in four years of big league sample size for him. He throws like a junk sinker, slider, cutter, changeup, curveball, just getting by on trying to like be a raw pitcher. He tries really hard. He wears spectacles. I guess that's cool or something. But like that is an analysis. I'm just throwing it out there. But this comes down to... What I believe about him as a pitcher, Ryan Pepio, and some of the unknowns we have taking on a Texas Rangers offense that I think is waiting to erupt against the entire Major League scene yet again this season, adding a Wyatt Langford into this lineup, although it hasn't been pretty for him, 153 expected batting average thus far. Again, small sample sizes. He's crushed at every single level that he has played baseball, all the way up through AAA, all the way into spring training. Wyatt Langford will be just fine. But Evan Carter, Jonah Hine, Ezekiel Duran Duran, Corey Seager, Adolis Garcia healthy. I mean, this is just a lineup on the other side taking on Ryan Pepio that should be locked and loaded. So I'm kind of willing to go out of my way and pick on both of these guys. I'm going to call this the lean like lock type section, but we're just going to call it the lock overall because I do think that this is the best play that we have here on the board. I do think with 14 games, there's going to be props that show up tomorrow in the positive EV tool. I don't want you to go crazy in some of these locks early in the season just because, you know, like the Yankees won. It felt really good about that one. The Miami Marlins are dead to me. I don't appreciate what they did to me Friday. But overall, friends, over eight and a half here in this spot, Dane Dunning, Ryan Pepio, they got a lot to prove to me. And Dane Dunning, I don't think can do anything to prove anything to me, taking on this Tampa Bay lineup of Brandon Lau, uh, Randy Rosarena, Yandy Diaz. Going to be fun, 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 fun to pick on him because, again, you're getting some value when you have a team like Texas that I'm not going to pick on him though with the money line today uh over eight and a half we like it and we've locked it the Detroit Tigers taking on the New York Mets I spent a lot of time on this game because I just I, I don't know what it was I wasn't overly familiar with Reese Olsen's last season I feel like maybe it was just a blip on the radar in the back of my head but like there were pitch qualities that I liked about him I know he pitched the entire year but there's certain teams that kind of black out on because we weren't ever really backing the Tigers. I mean, you were getting value in some spots to do so. Spencer Torkelson had a great sophomore year, had a tough weekend. We'll we'll see how he progresses. Like seeing Kerry Carpenter up there at the top of that lineup. But Sean Manaya, another guy that uh, we've seen bounce around a little bit. Padres, Giants. Here we are with Sean Manaya suiting up for the New York Mets. So Southpaw guy. We'll get into both of these guys. Let's start with Reese Olsen here. He's only 24 years of age. He was like an unknown 2018 draft pick, and I don't know where he came from, but there is some decent qualities about some of his pitches, the slider four-seamer. I'm not in love with it. Again, it just feels like a a player that I kind of just blacked out of my brain. That that happens with some of these fourth, fifth starters, but he had such a large sample size that I was a little bit surprised that I didn't remember a lot about him. Digging into it, I can see why. 4.73 expected ERA, 42.8% hard hit. Uh, Not exactly ideal here. Some of the worst fourth, fifth back-end starters to rotations that I can remember in recent years. But Reese Olsen, he has the ability to throw this this off-speed changeup. I do like the changeup as well. I think if he can start throwing that pitch more, I believe he only had 15% usage on that pitch in 2023. Would like to see that come up a little bit. I know it's not going to be crazy if you're not locating and it's what it is but uh, I very much like that pitch and think that that could be something with a 276 expected batting average that if that can improve a little bit I do like some of the qualities that it has coming off of his four seamer that might be a little bit of over analysis and over analysis paralysis it is what it is but Sean and I on the other side I think there's something here I think we can pick on Sean and I even a little bit more than Reese Olsen and I think that's where you have to like you can dislike both sides of the of a game or, or have question marks about certain sides of the game, but it all comes down to what is the price at the end of the day. And plus 110 here, 
that we're getting on the money line. I put that into play here. I know I have a lot of dogs on the money lines here. Uh, we'll get to one coming up a little bit later here, Toronto, Houston. I think that's going to be actually my favorite spot on the board outside of that Texas Tampa Bay over that we got. Um, but this one is pretty close. This one is pretty close. I even put the Detroit first five on because Sean Manaya, 25.7% K rate, 36.4% hard hit, but we're seeing that barrel rate, 8.7%. Now it's not close to resourcing 10.9%, but you look at some of these righties in the Tigers lineup, you get them out of their ballpark into, well, I guess they opened in Chicago, but same based on their 2023 baselines, putting them into New York, pretty neutral here as well. Uh, definitely better for homers than what it's going to be there in Detroit. But I look at Francisco Alvarez, Starling Marte, and some of these other guys for the Mets lineup. They're going to have to really overachieve to make any kind of waves in the NL this season because this rotation isn't very good. And Sean Manaya is going to have to have an unbelievable year. And I don't know if I completely trust him, but I like the Kerry Carpenter piece there even at the top. I know he probably won't be you know, going up against a lot of lefties here uh, now and again, but I think some of these righties too, we're waiting on Mr. Mark Canna to just go out and smash again. That would be fun to see him uh, find a little bit of that power. Only a 315 expected slugging so far this season. Nothing crazy there, but Riley Green, he'll be in there even left on left and like the bat. Gio Urshula, somebody that Twins and Angels and a lot of teams have taken as a platoon guy. I think that'll be decent enough. I mean, I worked through this Tigers lineup. Don't completely hate it. I think they're also 3-0, so there's that. I don't care. I don't care. What I care about is Detroit money line. I like Detroit first five. I'm leaning on double tapping it just so that I can try to get a little bit of something out of this. But overall, Detroit money line, that's the priority. I was torn because I wanted to lock two things here on this card. And I ended up going like lock mainly because I, how many bets are you going to be making during the course of the day is kind of the question. How are you extending your bankroll? How are you utilizing it? Now, I prefer in baseball to find... 10, 20, 30 type bets over the course of the day. Find little pieces here and there if I can. You know, and, and most of that is just paired up with the positive EV tool. I add my premium picks then to the betting card for the people over at Odd Chopper, and we have ourselves a fantastic little day. But this is such a phenomenal spot. I just didn't want to have two things where I was basically saying, oh, well, you have two fantastic. Uh, I will get better about that going forward here, but early in the MLB season, I just want you to be practical with your bankroll as we're accumulating sample size, as we're starting to feel out how, how you should be extending your bankroll on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, Odd Chopper, you can put your bankroll up in the top corner, something that people probably don't utilize enough, and it gives you recommended bets for each of those props. Those are fantastic, but I want you to be adding this one to the party. I don't know why I'm about to choke, don't mind me. Anywho, Toronto taking on Houston, and Houston getting swept by the Yankees. Never thought I'd see the day where I was excited to see that. Now, obviously, we did lock on Thursday the New York Yankees as a nice <clears throat> dying plus money uh, dog there in that spot. That was useful. Useful, friends. But this one's a little bit hairier for me. A little bit hairier. Ever so slightly hairier. And so I downgraded it to a like lock. Again, it's just informing you of my confidence in this specific play. It's just below that over that we took a little bit earlier in that Tampa spot. But Bowden Francis is going to be getting the ball going up against Ronel Blanco. And Ronel Blanco, somebody that I think they thought was going to crack into the rotation at some point last season, 28 years of age, came out, really, really struggled in 2022, 7.88 expected ERA in his couple of starts, really didn't carve out any time at the big league level. Last season... Had to be called upon. They've had a ton of injuries. The McCuller stuff. And they've been a lot of injuries to their pitching staff here and there. Obviously, Houston Astros are expected to contend every single season. And even though the slow start, kind of expect them to yet again here. It'd be kind of crazy that they would fall out by the wayside. But Mariners got pretty good. Rangers are pretty good. Just throwing it out there. But I look through Ronel Blanc stuff. Not very good. His fastball is basically nothing. It's 95, but it's flat. There's not a lot of movement. I'm not a big fan of it here. And then the breaking stuff. Slider's pretty good. Slider's the primary pitch, in fact. 49% usage there on that. Kind of a two-pitch pony. 9% changeup usage. You get two pitches with one being a pretty big negative in that fastball. The thing you need to locate in order to set up the slider. Or you better just be putting slider in play over and over and over and over. 
over and over so they don't get it out of play is what i'm saying something like that anywho on the other side of this one we have a couple of unknowns here in the brandon francis char uh, character but he is the guy that we have seen uh, three big league starts from thus far and I feel pretty good about a couple of the things that we've seen in some of those starts. Now, he did do a lot of the, the bullpen duty. He's got a guy that they're going to have to get lengthened out in this spot here. Uh, but overall, 6'5", 27-year-old, really good fastball, it would appear to me. Curveball seems pretty decent as well. How are they the dogs? How, how are they the dogs here in this spot? It's just a ton of respect for a Houston lineup that is expected to be better than the Toronto lineup. And I'm not sure, top to bottom, that we can say that anymore. And that's where I'm just saying, I think Bowden Francis, even if he doesn't go completely far into this one, again, the longer reliever type history for him here, he's got the better stuff. I like it more than Bronco stuff. I think this is going to be a Toronto lineup that you do not want to sleep on. You obviously had Vlad Guerrero, who was like top three in spring training, every single metric across the board. Justin Tyroner, George Springer, Davis Schneider goes yard on Sunday. Going to be a guy from the left side that they really, really want to have breakout. Dolan Varsho, hopefully a bounce back season. And Bo Bichette, Daniel Vogelbach. Um, sorry, Daniel Schneider's a righty. I don't know why I said that. Anyway, friends, I absolutely love this spot. Getting plus money, plus 126 over at FanDuel. Much better backing them there over any other book that exists here at the moment. And I can't imagine a scenario where I wouldn't want to be on the Toronto side of this one. Again, Houston, slow start. They're going to win a game eventually, and I do think they're, again, going to contend. But hope they lose another one on Monday, because I'm going to call it a like lock Dealer's choice. If you're going to only have like two, three, four plays from this video, this is one to be prioritizing for sure. I get a little paranoid sometimes because, again, we're talking baseball for the first time in a long time, and I have a lot of models and a lot of uh, information. You can go to Baseball Savant, Fan Graphs. You can, you know, go over to Odd Shopper and do the market-based thing. I'm trying to put it all together in a spreadsheet, and then I get a little paranoid that I'm not explaining everything correctly about my plays. Here's the thing you needed to know about home run plays, because, well, I've only hit one over the force, of course of my first 11 home run bets. Not great, Bob. Not great. But they're never going to be over a half unit, unless I otherwise specify. They're never, ever going to be locks, because, again, having a guy hit a ball 360 into the atmosphere and take off into infinity and beyond, that takes a little bit of, uh, it's a little finagling, but... Home run model started off a little bit slow here, but luckily Giancarlo Stanton decided to go yaya yeah, yeah, uh, and, well, salvage a little bit of something for me there on Friday. But anywho, on this video so far, we've had three home run plays and we are over. Thanks for coming. No, over two, over two. Looked at that wrong, but I was counting the Soul Series, so over three if we're going to count the Soul Series. Over two during the regular season. Anyway, I just keep talking about how I haven't hit any of them, but let's take a look at Oakland, shall we? Because this ballpark sucks for power. Uh, it is an absolute cavern, but there's a lefty that plays for the Boston Red Sox. Well, there's two of them that I really like. Tristan Cassis is another. We'll talk about the other, but Oakland, they're going to be throwing out Joe Boyle and Joe, Joe Boyle rules. It'd be a funnier joke if there weren't an O'Doyle in baseball, but there is. Anyway, Joe Boyle, this guy could be really fun. 6'7", 24 years old, and he throws rockets 98 miles per hour. Now, do the rockets hit bats? That would be fun. That would be fun in this spot specifically, because then you can motor in. Again, one thing that's a little bit unknown, you have somebody like Hunter Green, gets a lot of strikeouts, could be an awesome arm, but when you throw it 98 and flat, Ball gets taken for a ride because these are major league hitters, friends, and there are not many better major league hitters than Rafael Devers. Now, he ended up getting scratched, but got back in the lineup on Sunday. I was paying very, very close attention to such things, but already up to a 930 expected slugging and just four batted ball events here this season. I mean, the guy is redonkulous. He is going to be redonkulous for years and years and years to come. He's the building block piece of the Red Sox. If they ever part ways with him, Red Sox fans should like ask for a refund on all of the things Mookie Betts and him <laughs> could have been fun to watch. Now he's not a very good fielder. That's problematic, but he's one of the best bats in baseball. One of the best lefties in baseball or just hitters overall last season, 55.1% hard hit percentage, the 12.7% barrel percentage that is useful. And then of course, the thing that I haven't talked about a ton so far this season, launch angle hey 12.4 degree launch angle everything is kind of like combining to maybe get some value now there is not a number out here so i'm taking the previous couple of games seeing where he was valued at it goes from a ballpark that's actually 
as much as it's a cavern in Seattle and plays towards pitchers, and we talked about the temperature there, it definitely is closer to average in terms of the home runs. Oakland is going to be a very, very tough ballpark to price certain individuals at because, well, they're going to be way worse odds than him going into Fenway on any given time, even though people don't understand. It's actually further out to right field. But whatever, we'll talk about Fenway when we get there. Let's talk about Oakland here. I think Rafael Devers to home run is something that I will have on my card so long as it is way better than plus 365. Now, if it's better than plus 365, bet it. If it's not, don't. Again, we are about positive EV here. I always threw out my projected pluses, uh, my, my my numbers, my basically trying to give you the price ahead of time. Again, there are ways to do such things and it is uh, difficult from time to time. Sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. But I love Rafael Devers to go long tomorrow. I don't love this game. Producer Jacob just made fun of me. It's whatever. Tristan McKenzie taking on uh, Mr. Hancock here and uh, I'll give him my John Hancock. Why am I making a joke about a guy who signed the Declaration of Independence? Wait, what? Am I that old guy now? I might be. I'm talking baseball and numbers. It's an old man sport. Golf wants to roll back the golf ball. They are rolling back the golf ball. That's stupid. Anyway, we are looking at a weird pricing here. Minus 115 here. Going up against Seattle, minus 105 and... And this just tells you that they really, the market is pretty bullish on Tristan McKenzie. There are times that we've seen some massive, massive upside from Tristan McKenzie. Uh, it just wasn't last season coming off of getting dinged up and, well, huge dips to his K rate over the course of four years. He's only 26 years of age, but 22, 33.1% K rate. When he was 23 in 2021, 27.5%. 256 to 21.9. Now, it was just a 300 pitch sample size. But a 4.64 expected ERA, just going to throw this out there, friends. Not great, Bob. Not great. 5.06 ERA. So actually, he's due for positive regression. Hey, waka waka. The fastball can be good. It's all he throws, really. I don't know what to make of it here. I wanted to maybe pull the trigger on Seattle. Then I just went through Emerson Hancock and I became like enamored with the exact opposite analysis where maybe Tristan McKenzie is properly priced here because Emerson Hancock, I got a lot of questions about. He's only 24, but I don't love these guys that are like top 10 picks with no velocity upside, throws at 92, 93. Like, what are you utilizing that pick for? I mean, it means that they really valued his off speed and I don't really see it. He's a guy who's going to throw a fastball a majority of the time. So the fastball has a little bit of life, but like, again, 92 at the big league level, not going to be something that's repetitive unless it sets up something else. Now, just three starts at the tail end of last season. We saw some decent enough stuff in those 3.33 expected ERA, but I just have so many question marks about what Seattle's doing. First of all, who drafted him in 2020? And second of all, like first start of this year, somebody who wants to be in this rotation going forward. He does limit barrels. He does limit walks. It would appear at the AAA level, but I'm just going to kind of wait and see it because I, I was working through what the Arkansas travelers and all of his numbers there. Nothing was all that appealing to me. I don't really see it here. So I'm going to go Cleveland or pass, but I'm probably going to pass and just, you know, witness whatever this Emerson Hancock fellow does and move on with my life. Good talk. Glad we had it. Oh boy, we're going to fly through this one. New York taking on Arizona, and I love the Yankees just for, you know, getting us a, a nice little lock across the plate to start off the, uh, the big league season. Also because it's never bad to see a team sweep the Houston Astros. Sorry, Astros fans, I love you too. Well, yeah, I do, because Ken, it, you love who you love. Yankees taking on the Diamondbacks here in this spot, friends, and uh, a pretty interesting patch up, uh, pitching matchup, if you will. I think that's the right word for it. It's not interesting on the Arizona side. Ryan Nelson is not very good whatsoever. 42.7% hard hit percentage, 15.5% K rate. But Luis Gill might have that kind of strikeout upside. He might have the ability. He might be a contender. Could have been a contender. I, I don't have a good brando. I apologize to producer Jacob. A lot of unknowns, but Luis Gill needs to be good if the Yankees want to be good because, well, he's going to have to pitch a lot. Garrett Cole going to be out. Making everybody work. We'll see. 
another guy with decent enough fastball. Ryan Nelson's absolutely terrible though. 11.6% barrel percentage. Only thing that I was really looking at was the over of nine and a half here. It's just that it's juiced to like minus 120 at some of these spots. 10 is the prevailing number already. I think we just kind of avoid it. Both these teams look as though their pitching staffs are still pretty intact after the weekend. Yankees didn't have to work too hard against the Astros and Arizona just put up infinity runs in a couple of those. Did lose one, but what are we doing here? I should probably add this to the card, but over nine and a half, just going to be a lean here on the outside looking in. What's better than one home run? It'd be weird if I didn't say two home runs, wouldn't it? It'd be weird. So we're going to say two home runs. We've got the Cardinals taking on the San Diego Padres and the Padres and the Giants. Interesting little series that they had to open up the weekend. But for me, I was just kind of paying attention to who did. I, I watched a lot of the West Coast games primarily because, well, you're going to find a lot of value betting against some of these teams, specifically the Dodgers, if there is anything to mine out with some of these starters, even though what, Bobby Miller finally did what I've been asking Bobby Miller to do forever. And he did it on a day I didn't bet his Cape Rock. Yay! Bet it how many times last year? I can actually tell you. Give me two seconds. Bobby Miller. One in five betting his K prop last year. What a dick. We got Kyle Gibson on the mound for St. Louis here. 44.5% hard hit percentage, 270 expected batting average, sub 20% K rate. He's been around forever, 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 ever. But anyway, he continues to find stints in the big leagues because not very many good starting pitchers. This is what I'm starting to learn after the last couple of days. But Matt Waldron going to be getting a start. And I'm fascinated to see what this workload looks like right from the get-go. Obviously, strength, uh, strengthened him out. That's a weird way of putting it. Lengthened him out there during uh, the old... Yeah. I, I'm not impressed by him either. 91, 92, topping off of the fastball. Slider cutter combo with it. Nothing's all that fun. Nothing's all that awesome. God, this is going to be another lean for the most part. But I want to attack Kyle Gibson on the on the way out because just similar to Rafael Devers, lefty there. I think we might find another lefty that we can get a little bit of free swinging from here. 53.8% hard hit percentage through 17, 17 batted ball events already. Nice to see the data actually update here on this side of things. But 351 expected batting average, so getting the ball on the bat. 392 x Woba, but the important thing for me, Maybe we can get the launch to just come up a little bit, Jay Cronenworth, just 5.6 degree average launch angle. It's such a small sample size, so I almost feel stupid talking about it. But that's never been a problem for him in the past. He averaged 18.2% in 2022, 15.2% in 2023. I think, I think we might see this guy be somebody that we can back. And he doesn't strike out a ton, had a sub 20% K rate, but he also doesn't walk a ton. We're talking a guy who hasn't walked yet this season. That seems useful. 8.8% walk rate, not the best of times or the worst of times from last season. Just doesn't walk a ton. Useful. I want my guys that I bet home runs on swinging the bat. So Jay Cronenworth, somebody that I expect nice plus money. Like we're talking north of plus 500. And you guys want to always, Eric has these random guys that pop in his home run model. What are we doing? How's Jay Cronenworth sound? That's about as random as I can find for you. Last game of the night. Not a ton of interest to get out of here as well. Again, I know we went lean, 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 lean to finish out, but I can't do anything about that. I don't want to force bad bets in for you. And we've got Odd Chopper that's going to identify a lot of good ones. There's actually some run lines that started popping that I'm going to be taking a little bit of a gander with here after the show. But the Giants taking on the Dodgers. James Paxton going to be on the mound there for them. And then San Francisco, they don't have an announced starter on the website. MLB here, but I think it's going to be Keaton Wynn. So I'm going to talk to you about this spot as though it's going to be Keaton Wynn. He's an intriguing arm, only a 20.3% K rate, but 243 expected batting average, 4.7% walk rate, good stuff. The hard hit though, 48%. He is an Iowa boy, so I'm going to be cheering for him. Iowa Western Community College. Again, I go way in depth on these pitchers, but I try to. Doesn't mean anything. It's means I use Google a lot. Uh, change up. That's kind of his primary pitch. And 96 on his fastball. Again, a guy who uses a primary fit change up and then mixes in the fastball. Always kind of an intriguing deal. Because again, 96 is like the upper 80th percentile of baseballs. 85th percentile of baseball, I would say. So most of the arms that you really see with that fastball velocity ramping it up, those are going to be your bullpen arms. And then 
you know, we know the guys who throw it like Bobby Miller. One in five Betty's coupons. Oh, yeah, let's talk the Dodgers here on the other side of things because, you know, that's my job. James Paxton. The Dodgers have found ways of reinvigorating guys' careers, whether it's Lance Lynn, who he didn't go perfectly well. We still had some hard hit issues for him, but you think of like Andrew Heaney, you think of some of these guys that they're able to sculpt and mold and really find that K stuff again. I'm intrigued to see what James Paxton does with these Dodgers. 24.6% K rate, that's way down from what? 28.9%, 29.4, 32.2. I'm not even putting in 2021 because he was hurt in 2022. He had the year off, didn't pitch at all. So is what it is. Well, last season, we saw a decent enough sample size, the four-seamer knuckle curve. We've seen it a lot. Pretty easy to look at. That's that's the combo. Cutter, I guess that's the other one that he throws, but you know, it's beside the point. It's not a very good pitch. He's 35. I don't know what to make of it. I can't possibly possibly go out of my way to back him when we're talking about minus 105 here on the run line. I wish I could. I wish I could. I think I can back them both here at the eight and a half. I think the under looks all right. Not the warmest of days. They're coming off of a lot of rain in LA over the weekend. Under eight and a half. Again, I apologize to anybody who actually did back Yoshi. He looked great on Saturday until the first rain delay since 2015 at Dodger Stadium. <laughs> uh, it's just a footnote to finish out the show. Promise, we'll have a lot more to fire up tomorrow. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist. Nearly a 15-minute video. Again, first time going through the rotation, giving you guys all the information I humanly possibly can about all of these starting pitchers. Very important when breaking down baseball. We're going to just accumulate sample size. I don't want to overreact to anything that we saw over the course of the weekend. Don't want to react to who's hot or what's going on. We're talking probability and price. And the longer the sample size, we're looking at AAA numbers. We're looking at 2023 and earlier. Like these are the things that are going to be more indicative of who a player is. Unless there is something very, very tangible that you are seeing uh, in an approach or something Again, I'm not going to be doing it, that's for sure. We're going to have plenty of bets. We're going to have plenty of props fired up there in that premium Discord and on the Odd Chopper tools as well. Uh, Producer Jacob, thank you so much. Don't forget to check out NBA Lindy's as well. Six games on tap for Monday. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Monday.